going? Mr. Limit here again with another video lecture. This one is going to have the essential question, how do you check your work when using evidence and analysis? Our topics are going to be evidence and analysis. Our key points today, we're going to be talking about essays and in particular the parts of the essay, thesis statements, supporting ideas, evidence and analysis. We're also going to be talking about the park exam in particular and here I'm not just talking about the essays in the park exam but I'm talking about the multiple choice questions as well and using one answer to check another. So let's go ahead and start talking about this. Um, we're going to be looking at everything um, the same that, same way that we look at a pyramid. The top is, of course, very important, but it's supported by everything below it. So even though the bottom layer just looks like a flat piece of nothing, it's holding up absolutely everything else above it. And that goes for each level that's uh, between the bottom and the top. If there's any, any problems between the bottom and the top, everything comes down. So that's kind of how we're going to look at this whole... Um, evidence and analysis thing because we have ideas and we have answers and we have all these things but they have to be supported by a foundation of evidence and analysis that's going to be what we're talking about here so let's look at a different pyramid this one's a little bit sillier now at the top these two people right here holding this American flag we can say that's our thesis statement right below that we have three supporting ideas for each of those supporting ideas, we have two pieces of evidence. So we have these two are for this one, these two are for this one, and these two are for this one. And below that, we have all of our analysis down there. At least two sentences of analysis for every sentence of evidence. That's our general rule here. So again, we're looking at this as a support structure that holds up our biggest idea at the top, but we need everything else to be in line and supporting that idea. Now, when we check our work during an essay, at every single step of the essay, there is an opportunity for us to double check to make sure we're actually on the right track. So let's go ahead and look at what I mean by that. We're gonna start off by uh, with the thesis statement, although my family and I have taken many wonderful vacations, none was more fun and exciting than our camping trip to the Grand Canyon. So I have two supporting ideas right there. I, what did I like about the Grand Canyon? Well, I like the hiking and the scenery, but I can't come up with a third supporting idea. So that's letting me know right now that my thesis statement is a bad one for me because I don't have enough supporting ideas to actually support it. So I'm gonna move on and change my thesis statement. So instead of Grand Canyon, I switched it to California, and now I have three things that I actually enjoyed about uh, California. Those are going to be my three supporting ideas. So you see, I, could, I didn't have enough supporting ideas to support my thesis, so I had to change my thesis to something that I could actually support with three different supporting ideas. Again, these three supporting ideas become the topic sentences of my body paragraphs, my three body paragraphs in the five paragraph essay. So we need to make sure we have three good supporting ideas. Let's move on to the next step. Now this is going to be our evidence step. Now, if you notice, I have ocean, weather, and food as my three supporting ideas. Right below ocean, I have my piece of evidence. I'm gonna talk about the time we went swimming and tried surfing. Underneath the weather, I'm going to say it was 75 degrees the whole time. It's a nice temperature, so the weather was perfect the whole time. But I don't have a piece of evidence for food because, well, I ended up eating the same thing over there that I usually do over here. So I can't support that with evidence. So, of course, I have to change that. So what I did is I changed it to uh, ocean, weather, and sightseeing instead of food because I now I have a piece of evidence to actually support that. Each family member chose a famous site to see, so we all went around together and we each had a site of our choice, so everyone got to see what they wanted to see. And now I have, again, this checkpoint right here. Not having a piece of evidence told me that I had to change my supporting idea, so I went ahead and changed it. Now we're gonna have another checkpoint down here. So I'm not going to go give you individual examples, but I do have my little question that I ask myself. How does my supporting idea and evidence support my thesis? Explain. So essentially, this checkpoint right here, we have to be able to answer this question. How does my supporting idea and evidence support my thesis? So we have to explain in our own words the connections between these two things and this one up here. Now, if we can't explain it, because sometimes we have good evidence, sometimes we have a good 
supporting idea, but we don't have the ability to actually explain it, or at least not in a way that our reader would understand. So that means that we have to go back and change some stuff. This is why it's very, very important for you to actually plan out your essays before you write them, because a lot of times what you end up finding is that you have good ideas, but you can't really explain them in the analysis part, okay? So this is how we check our work during an essay. Let's go ahead and review these checkpoints real quick. So a thesis statement, I'm, I just have these uh, guiding questions right here for you to ask. Now these are for uh, questions that you ask at every step. Now every time you come to one of these questions, what you're going to do is if you can't uh, answer the question, you're going to say, all right, something has to change. I need to take a step back and fix it. Just like what I gave you examples of earlier. Okay. So checkpoint review, thesis statement. Does your thesis statement address all aspects of your writing prompt? So after you write your thesis, you actually go and check to make sure every single part of the um, prompt is actually addressed. That's where it, it's important for you to underline things like action verbs in your the, uh, in your prompt. So it'll let you know exactly what you need to do. All right, our checkpoint question for supporting ideas. Do you have enough supporting ideas to support your thesis statement? So that's what we had uh, when right here where we ended up changing our thesis because we didn't have enough supporting ideas. Right below that, we have our evidence checkpoint. Do you have at least two pieces of textual uh, evidence to support each supporting idea? Now we always go with two. Um, one, it's always better to have more evidence and two, um, sometimes we realize that when we're writing that one piece of evidence won't actually work. So we already have a backup plan in mind, um, ready to go. So that's why we always choose two when we're doing our planning. And finally, our analysis question, can you explain the connection between your supporting ideas, evidence, thesis, and prompt? So we need to be able to answer that one as well. And that's going to be exactly what we do with our analysis is just explain the connections for our reader and make it really clear about why your position is correct and why your position is supported by both evidence and analysis. And that's going to be what we do down here on this final step. So it's going to be the end of each of your body paragraphs. All right, let's go ahead and move on to checking work during the park exam. Now, this is going to focus mostly on multiple choice questions. I'm going to go ahead and have you take notes on this real quick, and then we're going to hop over to the park practice exam and actually look at um, some of the example questions so I can tell you what this stuff actually means with those examples. So our first guiding question, can each answer be supported by evidence from the text? Now this is important and there's a certain way I always explain these reading tests to students. It's that this is the one test that they give you that they also give you all of the answers because the answer to each question is in the text that they also give you to read. So that means it's more of a matter of you learning how to be patient and uh, take your time and actually dig out those answers because they're all in there, you just have to find them. So that's why our first guiding question is always, can each answer be supported by evidence from the text? And if you can't point to something in the text uh, that supports that answer, there's a really good chance that it's wrong. All right, and we have our other guiding questions. When questions are in pairs, now on the we're gonna see this here in a minute, but in the park exam, there's always, uh, a lot of times there's question A and question B. So, um, and they pop up on the same page. So when questions are in pairs, does the answer to the evidence question match up with the answer to the main question? Now, there's always your main questions, you're usually gonna be question A. And question B, um, always just ask for evidence to support the other question. So. In other words, they have to match up, otherwise they're both wrong. So if they don't match up, you're just assuming that they're both wrong. So let's go ahead and hop over to the uh, park practice exam and we'll have a look at what that actually means. All right, so we're back here in the park practice test. We're gonna be looking at these two questions right here, part A and part B, just to give you an example of what we've been talking about with checking our work using uh, one question to check the work of another question. Um, part A is what we're referring to as our main question. It's asking a question about the text over here. Part B is what we refer to as our evidence question because it's only asking for evidence for part A. So this matches up with this. Think of it like a matching game. If these two don't match up, then one or both are wrong. So we have to make sure that we're going taking a step back. So if I were to choose one of these question, uh, responses right here to the question, 
and it's not supported by anything down here, I know I'm gonna go back and change it. So for example, if I had chosen C, there's something pushing me in that direction after I read it, but I go down to part B and say, which phrase of paragraph seven uh, clarifies the meaning of material strength? A, a situation is allowed to develop in the world. B, continuous danger of sudden annihilation. C, solemn responsibility of the United States. And D, lead in the field of atomic power. Nothing refers to uh, overall wealth. So I know right now I'm going to cross this out because nothing down here matches it. And that's a problem for me because the answer to part B has to match with the answer to part A. So I know for a fact it's not going to be this one because nothing down here matches it. So already I'm using one part to check the work of the other part. So I had chosen initially C, this reference to wealth, but nothing supports it, so I have to go back and change it. Now I'm starting over and rereading the question and going back to the text. What is the meaning of the phrase material strength as it is used in paragraph 8? Paragraph 8 right here. The added material strength which this leads gives to the United States uh, gives to the United States brings with it the obligation of restraint. So we have our phrase that's used right there. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. I'll go ahead and do pink, and we don't really clarify which lead it's talking about. So I'm gonna back up a little bit, and then we have right here. Uh, the United States singled out by the virtue of her lead in the field of atomic power. So now we know that this lead that it's referring to is actually referring to atomic power. So I'm going to highlight that right there. The added material strength. So again, atomic power, the added material strength. I'm going to go ahead and choose this response right here that says superior weaponry. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down here and make sure real quick that there is one of these that supports it because based on the context I'm going with the response superior weaponry because we're talking a lot about atomic power and all these other things right here so I'm gonna go ahead and go back and see if any of these actually support it now if it does support it there's a really good chance that that's gonna be the correct answer okay so let's go ahead and look at our uh, responses for part B again. A, a situation is allowed to develop in the world. That doesn't answer it, uh, support it. Uh, B, continuous danger of sudden annihilation. Doesn't support it either. It's not looking good right now. And C, solemn responsibility of the United States. Again, doesn't support it. D, lead in the field of atomic power. Again, superior weaponry, atomic power. This lines up right here. Now, what I've done is I've been approaching these questions as a pair, not one and then the other. I'm looking at them at the same time because they have to tie in together. Now, since I'm taking the practice test, I'm going to go ahead and just review here and I'm going to show you whether or not we actually got that one correct. Okay. Now I'm going to scroll down. Maximum score two and student score. That's us. That's going to be two. So we've got two out of two on that one. Now, this is a perfect example of how you check your work during the park exam. So the big thing, make sure you're taking your time, slowing down and understanding that the answer to each question is in the text. It's just your job to find it. And after that, making sure that you're checking your work using the answers to multiple questions and how they line up and work with each other. Because if they're part A and part B, they have to uh, work and respond to one another. So again, make sure you check your work as you go. That's going to do it for today. Have a good one.